Hi, it's me. <laughs> Welcome to episode 780. And the topic today is um, be happy alone. If you do, you'll have much healthier relationships. This is basically a topic I've talked about in other ways, but I want to talk about it this way today because that's what's fresh in my mind. So before I dive into the topic, let me introduce myself to so know who I am and why I do these talks every day because there's a reason, method behind the madness or the reason behind the rationale, something like that. Um, if you don't really know who I am, my name is Barry Selby. I do these talks every day in case you hadn't seen them before. And I am, a, besides being a best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, I'm also a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspirational speaker, that's good. And a, <laughs> and, a, and a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is why I help women create balance in love, life, and business. It's also when I started these talks in the first place called Messages, to the Mas Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Feminine Heart. Well, the talks really often times are for everybody. So today the topic is about being happy alone and thereby having much healthier relationships. And again, this is episode number 780. If you haven't seen the talks before, I'll give you links at the back end when you find my previous broadcast, because there's a ton of them out there, obviously. And every one of them is full of flavor and, and helpful. <laughs> sort of, kind of. So, um, happy Sunday, by the way, hence the uh, casual attire. It is a weekend broadcast. But I want to talk about this in another way. I've talked about being, being okay single, being happy single. Well, I haven't said being happy single, but I'll get to that. But how it's important to learn how to love yourself first. It's kind of the same thing, but I want to make sure you get this point because some people aren't getting it yet. <laughs> so I keep talking about it. And what I'm, I'm clear about is several things. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just got a bunch of them just showed up in my head. So I'm attempting to put these in some sort of sequence to give you some insight, some inspiration, and some direction. So thanks for being in my broadcast. If you want to comment along and interact whilst you're here and say hi, feel free to do so. Um, this is a pivotal part, a pivotal piece for a lot of people. And if it isn't for you, it's for somebody else you may know, so feel free to let them know about it if you choose to. But I want to make this point clear. Being happy alone is not some strange, crazy idea. Now, some people do choose to get happy by doing things that are not necessarily healthy, so let me break that one down as well. First of all, you can be happy just by being who you are without having any artificial support structures, any addictions, distractions, or other formulaic f formulaic formulas no practices that aren't healthy to make yourself attempt to feel happy happiness is an inside job has been there's a book about that somewhere i'm sure on on amazon you can find called happiness is an inside job but really when you come back to being happy it's the sense of being your own resource that's the key i'm getting to here to be happy alone isn't to be so distracted by everything else in the world you can be happy all the time no being happy is just to enjoy your own company and to, res to resource your happiness from inside. Being happy alone sounds so simple, but for a lot of people, it's out, almost out, well, it's not beyond reach. It's just not something they practice much. So I'm gonna give you some clues and tips on that as well in a moment. First, I'm gonna give you the idea of the benefits of being happy from within, resourced inside, because when you do that, as I said, all your, all your all your relationships will improve? Well, your participation in all those relationships will improve for sure. Because the thing is, when you come back to yourself and I said you have healthy relationships, I said your relationships will be more healthy because, so I'm, I must say it in a way that makes sense without letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> when you resource yourself first, it makes you a much better person to be with. I'll put it that way first. When you love yourself first, when you are happy with who you are first, when you resource your own joy within yourself first, there's a clue by the way, that's first, relationship second. These resource places you bring forward in yourself make you, make you don't make you, they provide you with the, the place to come from to be a much better participant in a relationship first of all. Who you are in a relationship is much more attractive and joyful and to be with you is much nicer because you actually are not going out there going, make me feel better. You are the person I'm feeling good about or me, making me feel good. Because this is the trap people fall into. To resource that movie once again, Jerry Maguire, this idea that you complete me is a fallacy. 
it sounds romantic it seems to be wonderful to watch on cat on tv on screen rather but it's not effective when you come to relationship when you present yourself into relationship dating all that stuff from a place where you do not need that because you're already resourcing yourself inside everything flows more easily and the person who you are with first of all will be way more relaxed because they're not having to keep trying to provide something to you to make you feel good because that's one of the challenges of dating <laughs> I've explored this myself that paradigm of being um, the generator for the other person is tiring extremely tiring but when you come to from the place of I'm okay as I am I love who I am what I'm about I enjoy my life when you meet somebody they'll love that more now even better is if they do the same thing because then the both of you or this is this is this is the juice this is the good stuff when you're both resourcing yourself first from your own happiness joy and fulfillment and you're doing things in your life that are fulfilling and so is the other person that I would say is the best eh, it's the most ex most joyful way of being in relationship because neither one of you need the other person however it's not like you don't bother being in a relationship but it means that you resource each other and you become more contribu contributing contributing presenting for a relationship and it makes a relationship work much better hi sue oh, exactly happy attra happy attracts happy too fill your fill your own your own cup first from abundant sharing come from abundance and not scarcity that's a perfect way of saying it so you're absolutely on point there sue thank you for saying that and it is about the place and i'm using happiness as the tool because it's one of the easy ones there's way more under the, in the bucket of things you can pull from because when you're in a place where you are um, resourcing yourself, I keep using that term resource and, and that place of filling up because happiness is one of many, many, many things you can be generating your own state for. So joy, happiness, fulfillment, love, appreciation, care, confidence, playfulness, um, fulfillment, all these different things you can resource inside. That would just be too many to put in the title, but at least you got the idea. All of these places, as, as Sue put it, about abundance, is you come from the place of fulfillment and abundance first. And by doing that first, first of all, you don't need anybody else. That's one of the keys, by the way. So you're not needy in a relationship, because who wants to be with somebody who's needy, really? Really, let's be clear. When you're not needy, you come from abundance, not scarcity. Again, as Sue put it, that's perfectly said, because what happens is the person you're with can enjoy being with you without feeling they've got hooks in them. You know, there's claws that some people do. Now, you've never done that to anybody else, but you've had the experience of somebody else doing it to you, I presume. I know I have had that experience. <laughs> Careful, I qualify that. So the trap we fall into, if we don't do that, is thinking that it's somebody else's job to make us feel happy. Now, you may feel like you want to be of service to your partner and make them feel happy, but don't, don't, don't fool yourself it's not your job to make them happy it's their job to be happy first you can add to the happiness certainly and you can be happy for them with them around them surrounding them so they can feel joyful as well but if you take it on as your responsibility you're denying the ability for them to be free themselves and a healthy relationship is for both partners to be free in being themselves so that freedom that we both generate both partners generate creates a place where happiness joy and celebration are the icing on the cake because you're not looking to the other person to provide those things that you think you need. Now, yes, there are certain things you love to have your partner provide for you, but if you are requiring them to do it, I'll get to the nasty part in a piece in a moment because it's coming up really clearly. When you're in the place where you are giving and contributing to yourself first and then to the relationship, it's a much healthier place to play, to dance, and celebrate. If you're in the, in the position, and maybe you've done it in the past, but not now, hopefully, where you're in a place where you're constantly wishing the other person would do something for you to make you feel okay, you're doomed to fail. Now, they might provide that, but here's the thing. I've talked about this before because it's so, it's so vital for you to understand. If you are in a place where you're dependent upon your, per your partner to provide happiness to you, provide joy to you, to provide that celebration of life to you so you feel okay, you may well be disappointed, as I mentioned, but secondly, they're going to be they are in the place where they control you yes yeah, so we use the word control here because what happens when you give your partner the responsibility to make you feel happy if they don't you get upset if they do you feel happy great 
But if you don't, you feel upset because what's happening is they control your feelings. Yes, control, because you gave them that power. Now, you may have an amazing partner and wonderful person you trust and love implicitly, but don't give them that control. Give them the freedom to love you, yes, but don't do it from the place of giving them all the power because it's not healthy. And I'm saying this from the point of view of being an autonomous, healthy participant in relationship. Bringing the joy yourself, bringing the happiness yourself, being filled up from inside first, and your partner brings even more with you, to you, together, that's a healthy relationship. And I'm a passionate um, devotee, teacher, guide for healthy relationships. But it starts with the individual. It starts with you being happy with who you are. Whether that's through mirror practice to get to know who you are, and I have some tools about that, I'll take mission in a moment, or just being in the world where you enjoy being alone and happy with who you are. Because also a part of this is when you're fully happy and joyful in who you are, when you don't need a relationship, that's when one generally shows up more easily. When you're hungry for a relationship, that's when it generally runs away or avoids you or you don't see it. There's a push-pull that happens and it's, it, it is kind of a, um, I must say law of attraction is something else. There's a pattern in here where basically when you love yourself and you're happy with who you are, you become a magnet for what's around you. You, become, you attract as, in fact, there it is right there. Thank you. So you said in the comment, happy attracts happy. Like I just seen right in front of me on the mess on the screen. That's the way it works. But needy attracts needy. And you don't want that, I'm sure. So the recognition is that when you exemplify, when you, not exhibit, exemplify? When you express and you are fully loving yourself first, you become this um, radiating magnet is that what it's saying? Radio and magnetize at the same time. That which you want. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying you should do that to get it. It's not how it works. You don't do. Ha you don't be happy to get happy because that's manipulation. That's control, and the energy is very evident too. You become detached. You become relaxed in the ability to be happy and celebrating yourself. So that which is out there can be pulled into in in as a bonus or as a gift. And that's the subtlety of this. It is being. If you, it's like if you want to be in a relationship and you want the passionate, joyful relationship, be happy and joyful yourself and don't go looking for it. You can attract it by being clear of the vision, but you're doing it from a place of detachment. I, I, I'm passionate about this part too. Um, yeah, I'll need to put that in. Okay, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a few things in the comments, some uh, links that I want you to check out because, or want you to take a look at because these will help you because the reality is it's not about chasing partnership. Now, for the masculine, for a man, being the pursuer, yes. But even for the men, self-support, self-love is fundamental as well. This is not just for the ladies, by the way. It's about both partners, as I mentioned. And yes, a man who's courting you is coming ideally from a place where he doesn't need you. It's desire and want and passion, want to be with you, wonderful. But be whole first. Ladies, you want to be in a man who actually is whole himself as well, because if he's not, it means you're going to be, he's going to be dependent upon you. And most ladies I know, that's not what they want either. They want a man who can stand on his own two feet, who is confident in who he is and loves himself. Yes, loves himself. Men can love themselves too. Where the dance of relationship becomes, again, additive. Both partners are already whole, full, and self-supportive. So they're adding to each other's relationship. But ladies, this is the other part, by the way. I mentioned this in many other talks. It's not your job to chase him either be attractive to bring him in and to be attractive is being fulfilled happy and loving yourself when you're in a place where you really do care about yourself love yourself and appreciate yourself you become ma ma more magnetic to that which you want it's let's say is it is it like flowers attracting bees I'm, I'm, i don't want to play too much in the nature things so i can make, make some very bad analogies out of this but the truth the way that a bee is attracted to a beautiful flower and to get to um connect it's kind of the similar thing. I'm being careful with these analogies because sometimes they go off the rails. Being true to yourself is the core. And when you're in a place where you attract what you want because you're already that place yourself, it's almost, again, like, like attracts like. When you're in a place where you love yourself, respect yourself, appreciate yourself, you're more attractive to that which you want. When you go chasing it, not so much. I think I made that point a few different ways. So, in conclusion, <laughs> I 
being happy alone means that first of all when you love yourself and you're happy with who you are you don't need a relationship because you don't you're not you're not feeling the the desire for it or I should say the 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 need for it's better word when you're in that place relationship comes more easily because again you're not pursuing but not putting out vibes of neediness but secondly relationship comes in as a bonus as a gift beyond what you're already doing and the thing is if you don't get the relationship right away you're okay too because you're not needing it it is an interesting place of the push-pull again about being in a place where you just love who you are and enjoy life and the relationship can come along at that time it's when people are going it's I won't say just women but I know a lot of women in their late 30s because this is the clock ticking thing I talked about you not for a long time but when women are running this feeling they need to have a relationship that, that got to have it or it's going to not work is when the, it's like that tight fist you can't you're not open to receive because your fat hand is closed so the quick analogy this one ladies when your hands are relaxed and open you're open to receive and that comes from the place of not being desperate or needy or attached to having a relationship for your life to be whole as I talked about before you already are whole you already are worthy you're already deserving remember that and then relationship can flow into that place and you can attract it and again attraction is the key for you ladies by the way I've given you about five different points along this talk so I'm going to say this is a bonus round um, this is why I created well I'm going to give you a couple of plugs this is why I created a program called Attract the Man You Want it's kind of like the title does it all ladies if you want a relationship you attract it by being the magnet by being that fullness that wholeness that joyful happy person that attracts him what you want now again you want a man who's already happy joyful and fulfilled himself but it starts with you being clear on yourself first so I'm going to put some things some some items links in the comments for you to check out because I recommend you check these out one is the self-love practice because mirror that mirror exercise I talk about is a fundamental part to bringing back the joy and happiness to yourself when you love yourself and care about yourself and you appreciate who you are there is an absolutely fundamental shift in your energetic that makes you more attractive to what you want so self-love practice will be in the comments I will put the track the man you want course in the comments because that's a fundamental training for women who want to attract the love they really want after you love yourself first and thirdly I'll put I'll put the um, link in for my coming home to yourself the new group course that I'm launching that is really the cornerstone of how you become back to fulfillment in who you are to be that magnet for what you want in relationship Whew. that should keep me busy um, I appreciate you being with me as always oh I'll put a link in the comments for this for a complimentary clarity conversation try that one in English complimentary clarity conversation in case you want to find out more about my work um, those have been the comment in the comments this is a cornerstone of my work and it's cornerstone of loving life when you love yourself first everything else flows I hope this has made sense to you um, that's basically the comments the links oh yeah replays this is by the by the way I'm, I'm wrapping up in case you didn't figure that out <laughs> um, this is my daily Facebook live I do on my personal page on Facebook which is Barry Selby this I do every day now for the last two plus years this is episode 780 as I mentioned if you want the replays you can see them on my business page on Facebook which is Barry Selby author or on my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby that's the channel please subscribe and there's a playlist on there called messages from the masculine um, so links will be in the comments replays will be available if you have any questions thoughts about this broadcast please put them below in the comments I'll respond after I sign off I appreciate you being with me as always this is my daily chat to inspire evoke and in hopefully inform so you'll have a better chance better chance a better perspective on love relationships and living a better life I thank you for being with me as always I'll see you again tomorrow same time same channel take care of yourself I'll see you again soon bye